Hello, in this video I'm going to show the process of working with the Visual Art Grasshopper styles in Revit using the Run and Site technology. As you may know, the Visual Art Grasshopper styles are Visual Art objects driven by Grasshopper definitions, letting you control the object parameters. For example, I can select this sofa and change its dimensions from the properties panel and set the width to 1 meter. The aim of this workflow is to be able to work with these grasshopper styles in Rhino and get them updated in Revit. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is to open grasshopper. So all the connection will go through grasshopper from Rhino to Revit. And I'm going to open a new document. So, first of all, I'm going to insert a furniture object created from a grasshopper style, for example, a wardrobe. Now I'm going to reference it in grasshopper. I go to params, visual art objects, furniture param, the right click and set one furniture. Now, maybe the most straightforward to send the geometry of this object from Rhino to Revit is using a, a direct shape. So in Revit, we have the option here to send the geometry as a direct shape. So we need to explode the geometry of this furniture object, and we will need the Visual Arc Explode component for that. Here I get the resulting V reps that I can connect to the geometry. And now I need to assign here a category. So I go to Revit, input, model category speaker. I'm going to select furniture. And connect it here. If I check the Revit, I will see that I've got an object tagged as a furniture, but there is no option to edit this type. So what we are going to do is to create a new type for this particular object. So rather than using this component, I'm going to create an add direct shape type. So we will connect the category here. We can connect the reps in the geometry input, and we just need to assign a name to it. Now we are going to deconstruct this furniture object in order to obtain its style's name. So I go to Visual Arc, Furniture, Deconstruct Furniture. I'm going to use a Deconstruct Furniture options. And finally, I need to deconstruct the style. Construct furniture style. And now I get the name. I connect this in here, and I have now the type generated. Now I need to connect this component to an add direct shape component. The location can be obtained from the deconstruct furniture object, again, the position of this object. But now we can see that this object is out of its position. That happens because this type has been created in the zero coordinates. So we'll need to orient the geometry of this furniture to the zero coordinates and then move it to that corresponding point. So with an orient, Component. I'm going to take this geometry and I will move it from its source plane, which is that position, to the target, which is the wall xy coordinates. And now this is the geometry that I need to, uh, I need to create the type from.
I'm going to delete the first instance of the direct shape. And now I get the resulting direct shape that I generated here. As you can see, I've got this object with the uh, corresponding uh, type name. If we want to develop this name further, because we may have different wardrobe with different dimensions, I'm going to add the dimensions of this object to its type's name. And I will use the format component for that purpose. I'm going to add two more items here and add the following syntax. The first input will correspond to the style's name. The next one will correspond to the width. Next one would be for the depth. And the third one for the height of the object. This is the format. The name of the style goes to the zero input. And now we need to get the width, height, and depth properties of this object. I'm going to type here the name of this property and make this a multiline data. Now I can use the visual arc get property component. Connect here the furniture in the object input and here the list of properties. So as a result, I will get the properties of this object. So I need to split this into different items. So this is the, the list, and I'm going to split this into three different outputs. So I get each one of these values in the different outputs. I will need to flatten this because later on, if I connect more than one furniture elements, I'll get this data in the proper structure. OK, so I'm going to connect this in the item number one, next one to number two, and finally the height to the number three. As a result, I get the design name for this uh, wardrobe. So I just need to use this text as the name of my direct shape. Now, when I select this wardrobe, I can see now it with the corresponding name. All right. So in addition to the to the name, these objects have many more parameters. If we check them out from the Visual Arc Properties panel, we can see that this has a width, has a depth, has some alignment, has some position, a volume, number of doors, and so on. We may want to bring all these parameters also into this uh, object. Or here there are the custom parameters that Visual App provides. So we can type here a cost or a manufacturer. And we want to bring all these parameters into the into Revit as well. So in order to do so, we'll need to define some shared parameters. So here in Revit, we go to parameters, define shared parameters. And the name of these parameters can be obtained with the Visual Arc property names component. So I connect the furniture here, and this will give me the names of all the properties that are stored into this object.
So this will be the names of the shared parameters. I need to set this override to true. And now I need to set all these shared parameters to the objects I have created. So I'm going to use the set element parameter component. These are the elements. These are the parameter keys. And the values is something that I will get with the visual art get property component. This is the object. These are the properties. And we can check the val we can check the values in here. So each value in this list matches with the index of the corresponding property. And I'm going to connect this in here. And I'll get these objects with the corresponding parameters. If we take a look at the output, we can see that we have all these values and we will use a create set component in order to do not get duplicated parameters. So now when I select this wardrobe, I can see here all the parameters fulfilled with the corresponding values. Now, if I want to use this definition for multiple objects, I will need a visual arc pipeline and enable here the furniture object. At first, I will need to graph this object input. And also the location of this direct shape. Or actually, instead of Grafting the location, I'm going to graph this position output. Now I can switch this connection from the individual furniture object to the output of the visual art pipeline. So if I close this definition and maybe make another copy of this wardrobe. We can see that the copy is created here. We can now change the parameters of this object. For example, change this to 2 meters width. We can check now that this wardrobe has the corresponding name and all the values here within its list of parameters. 